Hi class, let's switch, switch gears from the skin and now focus on the eye. So we're going to spend some time talking about the eye and its normal structural defenses, the normal microbiota of the eye, and then some infections that can occur within the eye. So first, let's focus on the eye's natural defenses. First, we have the conjunctiva. The conjunctiva is a membrane-like tissue. It's very thin, and it covers the eye, with the exception of the cornea, and lines our eyelids. It's going to essentially be that tissue that helps to hold the eye within the eye socket, is how I like to describe it to my anatomy students. It has an oil and mucousy substance that's secreted from it that helps to lubricate the eyelid and lubricate the eye as it's moving around within the eye socket. We also have the cornea. The cornea is a dome state structure at the most anterior central portion of the eye. It's completely transparent and will cover the iris. Our cornea is going to have five to six layers of cells that regenerate very quickly if they're damaged. Oftentimes, we can refer to the cornea as the quote-unquote windshield of our eye. So here we can see that cornea. And then we can have the conjunctiva, which is the membrane on the edge of the eye. And that conjunctiva merges with the white of the eye with the sclera to help hold the eyeball in place. From an anterior view, you'll see the cornea over the top of the iris and pupil, and then the conjunctiva would be right around the edge, the border of our eye. Very difficult to see from that view. The tears that we produce are the single best defense we have for our eyes. They have lots of water or watery fluid that has a little bit of oil and mucus in them to aid with hydration. The tears are formed in the lacrimal gland, and then will be secreted, which is going to be superior and lateral to the eye, and be secreted and flow across the eye until they hit the lacrimal duct, which is lateral and, excuse me, medial and inferior to the eye. That lacrimal duct is therefore just at the inner corner. The aqueous portion of our tears has a lysozyme in it that, and a lactoferrin in it. The lysozyme is going to be an enzyme that's designed to help cause bacterial cells to lyse. Lactoferrin is an en going to be a protein that helps to remove iron from solution, to minimize iron content, and thereby minimize microbial growth. Our mucus is also going to have a lot of protein and sugars in it. Those proteins and sugars could potentially be a source of bacterial growth, but we have a constant flow of tear that's going to prevent the attachment of microorganisms to the surface of our eyes. So we're constantly flushing our eyes. Here we see that lacrimal gland at the superior lateral margin of the eye, the upper outer corner, and the tears will flow medially to the medial inferior portion of the eye where we have the lacrimal duct and sacs, or the lower inner corner of our eyes. We're also going to find that our eye, while it's primarily involved with vision, will also be able to help us with some other sensory receptions as well. We can sense if there's going to be small amounts of dust in the air as that dust is impacting our eyes. But the primary function is always going to be vision. So anything that can hinder that vision is going to be very counterproductive for us. So if we have inflammation occur, we really don't want that on the eye itself, particularly in the cornea or in the iris of the eye or in the retina on the back of the eye. Inflammation still can occur in the eye, but it's much more difficult to induce. If we take our eye and flood it with light from different objects that reflect light in different directions, such as lymphocytes and vagocytes, that can tend to blur our vision. So we want to keep the concentration of microorganisms on the surface of our eye very low to keep our vision very sharp. Our eye has what we call immune privilege. And this means that we have reduced innate immunity in our eye because we want to focus on getting as much vision as possible in our eye. So we have fewer white blood cells that make up that secondary line of defense moving through our eye because those white blood cells would obscure our vision. So concept check class. Which of the following is not a natural defense of the eye? Flushing action of the tears, phagocytes, lysozymes, lactoferrin, or mucus. You can rewind the video or get me an answer, or check your textbook to get me an answer. One, two, three, four, five. The correct answer is B, phagocytes. 
Our eyes are immunoprivileged, which means that we don't have as many white blood cells patrolling our eye because those white blood cells would diffract light and obscure our vision. So let's move on and talk about the normal biota of the eye. Our eye, generally speaking, doesn't have a lot of microorganisms growing on it. In 20% of the people that have been tested in a recent study, approximately no microorganisms were found. So no cultural bacteria were found in their eyes. The bacteria that are found on the eye, generally speaking, resemble the biota of the, of the skin. So we'll have the staphylococci, the streptococci, the corny bacteria, and the yeast, and the neisseria. These guys, actually these first four, are very common to the skin. So here we can see that our eye has a variety of defenses from mucus to tears to lysozymes and the microorganisms that are present on our eye, generally speaking, are similar to the microorganisms that are present on our skin. They're just at much lower numbers. Concept check. The normal biota of the eye most resembles the normal biota of the what? GI tract, the GU tract, the skin, the oral cavity, or none of the choices are correct. Go ahead and rewind the video, check your textbook, or check your notes to get me an answer. One, two, three, four, five. The correct answer is C, the skin. The biota of the eye most closely resembles the normal biota of the skin. If you have any questions about this material, please feel free to post them on the discussion board. Or